Think now, what is important here? Read the question. Don't read the question, just racing through to get to the choices. I want you to see how it feels. Because that's what people do, they race through the questions, so they can look at the choices. It's more important to get the question right, the choices are still gonna be there. Well, I think the fact that she's six months old, I just gave this um, to my AEMT class, as a matter of fact. Um, and these questions, by the way, are all EMT level. But what's interesting, they're sitting here saying, oh, you know, it's a paramedic, uh, I'm taking paramedic. I tell you, I operate since questions are all essentially EMT questions. And the number of questions I had that could have been BLS questions that weren't all about paramedic skills, everyone needs this, right? She's cyanotic, slow to respond empty balloon in her mouth, just pinpoint pupils. Vital signs are bad, so you have ventilator. With a pulse below 100, you're gonna ventilate her anyway. So the registry tells you that. What do they wanna know? What you do next? So, she's six months old, right? We know that she can't verbalize what's wrong, that her pulse should be, and her respiration should be a lot more than that. Right, they're depressed. Those respirations are slow. You know, it's six months old, what, 25, 30, you know, to she's little. And her pulse is also very low. And remember, hypoxia can, can do that. She's cyanotic. Yeah, that's not good. That's late and ominous. Cyanosis is bad. She's slow to respond. That's also bad. Empty balloon. So what do we think that this balloon um, is from, right? You know, what do we think the balloon has to do with this? The pupils are pinpoint. What was in the balloon? Right. Remember, these two questions we're doing, everything that we're doing comes down to not just reading, not just interpreting, we have to figure out what we value the most in this. What's the most important thing, right? You say it's a balloon. I had students that say I was choking. I had students say maybe it was helium, which would probably mostly make her cry funny. But not everyone goes to uh, an opioid. But those pinpoint pupils, there's no reason for that. And you wouldn't necessarily expect that from hypoxia, right? Really slow after you begin to ventilate. So it says, okay, you've done this, what next? So here's the choices. You get in chest compressions, administer naloxone, that's for blood pressure, or ask your father to discard the balloon. Well, I think we can scratch D. And I think we have, you know, some big issues. You think, well, now we have some choosability issues. We know that if her pulse is below 100, we're going to ventilate. And if it's below 60, we're gonna do compressions. So we're not gonna do compressions at this point because her pulse is 72. So now we have administered naloxone and assess her blood pressure. Remember this choosability concept. If you picked up the empty balloon, pinpoint pupils, slow respirations, and the fact that she's slow to respond, that is essentially a beautiful description of the opioid toxidrome the things you see with an opioid. If you miss that pinpoint pupil and you wrote everything off on uh, that, you say, well, maybe I better check her blood pressure. That's not right. The correct answer is to administer naloxone. This requires you to look at everything and weigh it out and figure out what's wrong. This kid got into her father's uh, heroin um, maybe a dad sells heroin, but there certainly was something around in that balloon. And you know what? A six month old wouldn't take that much than the residue in the balloon for that to really kind of make a difference. Naloxone shouldn't uh, lower, the, lower the blood pressure. It will bring uh, respirations back. The indication for naloxone um, is respiratory depression, right? It's not to wake people up, it's to make them breathe. If you're looking at the art form of administering naloxone, it's get them back breathing and don't wake them up. What you see, what it means. That's what we're talking about here. And I'm guessing 
then let me know in the in the in the question section. Did you know that you had to read questions like this to really interpret them, to really think about them clinically, just like you would on the street? All of these facts would guide your care on the street. There's no trickery, and the question shouldn't be easy, quite frankly. If you've taken the registry before, I deal with a lot of people in my online uh, study uh, stuff, and a lot of them, when I go through stuff like this, they go, oh, I didn't know you had to read the questions like that. Then I go back and pass. And that's what we want. We started this company just to do good stuff, get good exam prep out there, because it's not all created equally. Questions that look like the registry, make you think like the registry, make a difference. All right, so yes, um, you can get naloxone for any age. Um, and um, it will be to reverse uh, respiratory depression. Um, the, the rate would be, the amount that you give would, would be a, a little bit uh, different. Timothy has a really good question. Um, I know there's an exception to every rule. However, do you typically always follow BLS before ALS on national registry questions, especially paramedic questions? And I have to say, you actually said for me what I would say is that in critical thinking, and the National Registry, there's no such thing as the word always. And the reason for that is, I can give you a question, but it depends on the choices. And a lot of times, the questions that are out there um, will ask you what you should do next. And we saw a, a, a you know thing here where, okay, we're gonna ventilate her. Some, if we didn't say after you ventilate her, the choice would be to ventilate her. Right? So I don't think you really have that much of a choice between ALS and BLS, and that what you should do is not, your, your question in your head should be, oh, should I do BLS or ALS? Sadly, we do that in this country because we make you take an EMT class before you become a paramedic, right? If we did taught you from head till chin lift to, to uh, RSI, it wouldn't be an issue. We, we add this BLS versus ALS stuff in falsely. Do of the four choices you get, do what the patient needs next, and you're gonna be okay.